This week, Sedra opens up with God answering the Jewish people's prayers. God tells Moshe, I heard the moans of the Jewish people whom the Egyptians are holding as slaves and I remember my covenant with them. Tell the Jewish people, I am the Lord and I will take you out from Egypt and I will save you from their labor. I will save you with an outstretched arm and great judgments. I will take you to me as a people and I will be a God to you and you will know that I am the Lord your God who has saved you from the Egyptians. I will bring you to the land which I gave to Avram, to Yitzhak, and to Yaakov, and I will give it to you, I am the Lord. Moshe related God's message to the Jewish people, but they didn't listen to Moshe because of their shortness of breath and because of their hard labor. Our scholars took considerable time explaining the phrase and discussing the reason for the Jewish people's shortness of breath. Rashi explained, whoever is under stress, his wind and his breath are short, and he cannot take a deep breath. How did the stress of their enslavement cause the Jewish people, though, to ignore Moshe's message? In his commentary to this verse, the Ramban wrote that this shortness of breath didn't reflect the Jewish people's lack of faith in Hashem, but rather their fear of power stemming from their hard work and threats of annihilation, and it put so much pressure on them that they couldn't process a promise to be free. Their fear and pressure inhibited their ability to work. While many might attribute their faith to God to blind acceptance and faith, Judaism believes that it stems from knowledge of God. The more knowledge one has of God, the stronger their faith will be. In describing the prophet, the closest state a person could be to Hashem, Maimonides wrote, A person who is full of great qualities and physically sound is fit for prophecy. When he understands great and sublime concepts, and if he possesses an accurate mental capacity to comprehend and grasp them, he will become sanctified. He will advance and separate himself from the masses who pursue the darkness of misunderstanding. He must continue and diligently train himself not to have any thoughts whatsoever about fruitless things or vanities and intricacies of the time. Maimonides continued, instead, his mind should constantly be directed upward, bound beneath God's throne of glory, striving to comprehend the sacred and pure forms of gazing at the wisdom of God in its entirety, its manifold manifestations from the most elevated spiritual form into the navel of the earth, appreciating his greatness from them. After these preparations, the divine spirit will immediately rest upon him. The Jewish people were under great pressure and worse then the backbreaking labor was the inability to think clearly. Even when told of their impending redemption, they couldn't process the good news. The worst part of stress is the handicap it puts on people's thoughts and their ability to process information. This was the most horrific part of the Jewish people's enslavement, that they couldn't think and listen to the prophecy that promised their freedom and their ability to connect to God. May it never be that we are unable to think about God and to think about the greatness that we have in our relationship with him. Shabbat Shalom.